So Lord, I pray for this word. I pray for this word as we begin a new series. I pray for, for, for the body who commits on Wednesdays to, to be bold. To be bold. To share words with one another. To minister to one another. To come to receive the full measure of your goodness. Lord, we pray this. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about healthy stewardship. And I know a lot of times when people hear stewardship, they're like, oh, they're going to talk about money. This is not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about stewardship, biblical stewardship. And more importantly, let's, let's describe what is biblical stewardship. And it is the responsible management and use of the gifts and resources that God has entrusted us with. I really want you to start to, to dig into what it means that God trusts you with everything, everything that he created. God created in the garden the mechanism to recreate, to replicate, sowing and reaping. God's not still in the business of creating. It's all recreation based on our stewardship. And this is why when we say the gifts and resources that God has entrusted to us, God trusts us with everything. It means utilizing and managing all the resources, both financial, the blessings and the spiritual gifts, everything from our relationships to our friendships to the clothes on your back. God expects us to be good stewards of everything. So I want to get into this series, and, and I want to, we're going to be a, a good stewards of time as well. But you know, I want to go over these key verses. I think these are, are paramount. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to stretch from Old Testament to New Testament. And, and, and I will. I'm going to ask again, and I'm going to keep stressing this, it's just that, that hashtag church culture when you mention stewardship. There, there's a connotation of giving. And that should never be a negative thing because God wants you to steward your money as well. But I want you to, to be open to the full expanse of what stewardship means. To the full understanding that you do have dominion and authority over everything. Even if you feel powerless right now, or maybe powerless in a certain circumstance, understand that you have dominion and authority over all things. So I want to walk through these scriptures to kind of lay the foundation. And the first one, it's uh, 1 Peter 4.10. There you go. And I just want you to, to let these, these scriptures, this is the word of the Lord. Let it saturate your mind. Steward your soul well. Steward your soul well. Being here for these equipping classes is stewarding your soul well. You are retraining your brain, renewing your mind with the word of the Lord. This isn't some feel good, get fuzzy type of class. This is based on the word of the Lord. These words will transform your mind. They will transform your life. But 1 Peter 4.10 tells us, As each one has received a gift... Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold of grace of God. See, we're an equipping church. We're in Ephesians 4, 11, 12 church. We are here to equip the body to do the work of ministry, to edify the body. And God gives us gifts. We all have gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not if we have gifts, it's which gifts do we have. So we all have gifts of the Spirit. And it's to, to make that decision of whether or not you want to minister that gift. And how do you want to minister that gift? But we're called to be good stewards of those gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. So then we go to Genesis 128. It said, then God blessed them and, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. This is God's call to you. We've talked about exousia in the Greek. It's the legal authority to operate and move in the power of God. You have the legal authority. God has given you authority to have dominion and authority over everything. 
What the devil will tell you is that you've got power over nothing. You don't have authority over nothing. Who are you to have dominion? Well, I'm who God says I am. And God says you have dominion and authority. Genesis 2.15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. This is stewardship. Everything in the garden was his responsibility. Even the mosquitoes and the, and the little creepy crawlies. That was his responsibility to steward that well. It is our responsibility to steward this well. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7. The cheerful giver. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And you know, because of, you know, churchiology, when we're thinking about being a giver, we're thinking about money. But what about giving of yourself, giving of your time, giving of your attention, giving of your, of your gifts? You know, I'll tell you this, uh, the, the, for years the Holy Spirit has always spoken so clear. And that's how he taught me obedience. The way he taught me obedience was he would say, take the money out of your wallet and give it to that person. Well, in the beginning, I'd be like, well, let me count, my money. <laughs> let me count the money in my wallet. And the Lord's like, I don't want you to do that. So I learned. I started being obedient. Then I thought I was going to be tricky. I'm like, well, I just won't keep any cash with me. And uh, you can never concoct a way out of obedience of the Lord. But I will tell you, the Lord over the years taught me obedience by doing that. And I will tell you, being a good steward, being a cheerful giver. Yesterday, I'm going to the gym, and, and, I, and it's so hot, and I see this kid on a bicycle, and he's got a shirt from the restaurant that he's working at, and I stopped, and he's pushing his bike up a hill, and he waves for me to go on. And I waved, and I turned, and, and I tell you, my heart was broken for this kid. We made eye contact, and the Holy Spirit said, go back and give him the money in your wallet. And I'm like, there's nowhere to turn around on this road. I'm never going to catch him. He's probably home by now. And boom, there was a turn to the left, and I whipped around, and I pulled the money out of my wallet. And, and I turned back, and I start chasing this kid down. And, and, and I, I stopped him, you know, and I just said, hey, no tricks, no games. The Lord told me to come and give you the money in my wallet. And I, rightfully so. He was a little hesitant, you know. And, and I just said, no tricks. God loves you. God loves you. And, and look, we started a conversation and sharing about the love of God and being obedient to the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you know, I walked up, I realized that I was more blessed than he was. It was an opportunity to steward well. Whatever money was in my wallet, to give to him cheerfully, to steward my time. I was like, well, I got to get to the gym and I got to get back. And no, my time's God's time. Make your time God's time. When, when 2 Corinthians is talking about being a cheerful giver, stretch beyond money. Stretch beyond what we naturally resort to. Think about stewarding. Like whose lives are you sowing into? Whose lives are you sowing into? If you're not sharing the gospel and you're not reaching out to people and, and ministering to them, then that's what you're going to find in return. You can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. Colossians 3.23, another foundational scripture. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men. Always do your best. Our, our old pastor at our church in Louisiana, if you're going to scrub toilets, be the best toilet scrubber you can be. Everything we do, God expects excellence. Not perfection, excellence. He expects us to do our best. Steward your gifts well. Steward your efforts well. Luke 16, 11. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? See, so many people, when they, they go back to Genesis, and they're like, well, I was told I had authority over everything and dominion, but I don't have nothing. What are your stewarding skills? Can you be trusted 
with great riches? Can you be trusted with other people's souls? We're in the soul care business. This is what stewardship is about. It's teaching us to care well for the things that God entrusts us to. So, the big part, that the thing we're going to talk about today is who's the owner? Who is the owner? This is a question that, that, that trips a lot of people up. And, and it got me for a while. You know, I'll tell you, I was well accomplished. Not financially, but I was academically and in my career and, and athletically. And, and I'm like, well, I work for it. It's got to be mine. And then the Lord started to deliver me from that mindset. It wasn't a demonic mindset. It was just a little misinformation. I didn't understand true stewardship. I didn't understand who was the owner. And when you come to realize that it all belongs to God, it frees you. It unburdens you. It liberates you. Like to, to experience the full blessing of God in our lives, we've got to fully understand who's the owner. God owns everything. Like, it can be a challenge to fully recognize that. Because we do. We get wrapped up in the whole thing. Well, you know, I work to get it. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's mine. And then you're always finding yourself short on the other end. These kids, these are our kids. We're going to protect them. We're going to take care of them. We're going to this and that. The second you realize they're not your kids. They're God's kids. When I used to leave for duty, Leah would be just sick with worry that I wasn't coming home. And then finally the Lord released her from that burden. said, he's mine. He's mine. You steward him, but he belongs to me. Ownership matters. So I'll give you an example. Imagine going into your wallet and then going and buying $100 worth of shoes and blankets for an orphanage. Now, that's generosity, and that's good stewardship, and yay for you. Now, imagine going into somebody else's house and going into their wallet and, and you know, taking $100, but you still go and you buy shoes and blankets for the orphanage. You see, you weren't generous. You were stealing. Ownership matters. Like determining who owns an object, it changes the perspective of how you interact with it. I will tell you, maybe, maybe we're similar, but I take care of things that I borrow from other people usually better than I take care of my own stuff. And, and if you find yourself in that same situation, then this is the reality of where we're at. Everything we have from our spouses to our kids to our tennis shoes, our cars. I know I'm like 3,000 miles over for an old change. I'll get it later. That's not good stewardship. Everything belongs to God, and He trusts you because He loves you, and He's trusting you to train you so He can give you more. You know, Psalms uh, 24, 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Like, that's a powerful statement. If you can name it, it belongs to God. The principle of ownership is the foundation of biblical stewardship. You really can't be a good steward if you're still attached to the idea, well, it's mine. It's mine. Your gifts, your ministry, your own life, everything belongs to God. And so that should be liberation because I will tell you, God will always take better care of everything than you will. God wants you to learn how to care for what he's entrusted you with. And what's important, uh, what I believe, when I really prayed about this biblical stewardship series, is that the whole year we've, we've focused on health. A healed church is a healthy church. And we've gone through uh, deliverance training and healing training and, and the way that God looks at us, the way that he sees us. And I believe we're at a point where the next step is to be healthy, is healthy stewardship. You know, it's so important to get these principles into your heart so that it begins to impact your actions and your relationships and your ability 
and your ability to multiply God's provisions. You see, before I, before I understood the, uh, this principle, I really did. I kind of thought things were mine because I worked hard. I was in a performance-based relationship. As a kid, I guarantee you, most of us grew up like that. You wanted to please your mom and dad, so you did what they said. Make good grades and be a good boy, right? Don't interrupt us when we're talking. Be a good girl. We were working to earn somebody else's approval. And sometimes those snippets of approval were really all we ever had. So we learned to get in this mindset that we've got to work to earn, to achieve, to accomplish. And God wants to, re, he wants to renew your mind. He wants to transform the way you think. He says, you don't have to work so hard, Brenda. It's yours. I love you. I give it to you. Ray, you don't have to work so hard. I love you, and I give it to you. I give it to you freely. When we come to understand that it's all His, and Scripture affirms that it's His, it really changes the way we approach everything. So I'm asking you to, to really focus on releasing that grip. Releasing that grip. And that doesn't mean that you're careless and reckless with you, what God trusts you with. Oh, I'm going to release it. I'm going to give it all away. Unless the Holy Spirit tells you to give it all away. That's not what God's talking about. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be abundantly provided for. In peace and joy and friendship and relationship, as well as financial provisions and security. But it's really when, when you get out of that mindset, when you drop the pride of ownership. You see, I was getting nowhere back in the day except deeper and deeper in indebtedness. Not financial indebtedness, but indebted to the university that I was going to. Indebted to the sport that I was participating in. Indebted to the career that I had to rise to the top of. You see, James 4, 6 tells us, but he gives more grace, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, we've talked about this before. If, if you find there's any resistance to, to being a good steward, if you find there's any resistance in your life about being a cheerful giver, and not just financially, but, but if, the word, if the Lord's given you a word of knowledge, and he says, hey, go, go share that with Anna. Mm, no, I don't really feel like it right now. Like you're being resistant to the movement and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. What will happen is God will resist you. We've talked about this before in, in, in the healing and, the, and the, particularly the deliverance. So I want to I lay this out. In the Greek, the word resist is antitasso. And I think we put it up there. Okay? And what it means in the Greek is that God resists you. If you were being proud or pride, well, I worked for that. I earned that. You know what? I've worked hard. I don't feel like coming on Wednesday. That's my time. That's cool. But if you're resisting God and letting go, this is what antitasso in the Greek is. It is to post an adverse array as an army, to set oneself in opposition. Like God is not attacking you, but God has just put up a stronghold, a fortress. And as much as you push, as much as you strain, as many hours of overtime as you work, you're not getting through. So how do you break through? If you're finding trouble in your finances, if you're finding trouble in your relationships, if you're finding that you're having trouble in your ministry... How do you break through that impenetrable wall? Well, it's the opposite of, of resist. It's surrender. In the Greek, it's hupotasso. And this is a military term. It means to arrange troop divisions in a military fashion. It's, it's submission. Two words, sub, putting yourself below the mission. In a military, if we say we've got to attack that hill, well, if you're over here saying, well, I don't feel like attacking the hill. I don't feel like submitting to lawful orders. Then you fail and the mission fails. If you, if you find that you're finding resistance in everything in life, in anything in life, really pray about it. Am I resisting the prompting of the Holy Spirit? I will share 
we, we've talked about the, the gift of tongues. And some folks say, I want to speak tongues, but I just, I just can't. And that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes there's a resistance to it because maybe uh, it's a misunderstanding or it's just new or it's different. But, but whether it's a relationship or gifts of the Spirit or tongues, surrendering to that opposition is what, what breaks the ranks. So I really do. I want to challenge you and just give you some time to, to think about it. Think about what areas of life that you're, that you're resistant in, areas of stewardship. Is the Lord leading you to, to, to be more bold in sharing the gospel? But you're like, ah, oh, man, my friends, they're my friends, but they're not going to be my friends if I keep talking about Jesus, you know? Well, then that's a choice you get to make. If, if it comes down to, to, to volunteering at the church, I'll put a little plug in for the volunteers. And you're like, uh, I don't know. I like waking up late and getting there right before worship starts. But you're finding there's a little bit of resistance in your life. Really start praying about those situations where, where you've been looking for breakthrough, where you look like you're coming up against the wall. It could be an issue of deliverance and freedom. It could be an issue of healing, chronic illness. It's all about taking that authority and dominion, but it starts with good stewardship. So I do, I want to challenge you. This is what Wednesdays are for. This isn't a hoorah, hoorah on Sunday mornings, and this is teaching. This is where special forces, spiritual warriors come to sight in their rifle. This is where they come to sharpen their aim on Wednesday nights. So these are more intimate times. These are more self-reflective times. So I do, I just want to challenge you to look at those areas in your life and realize it's all God's, but God trusts you with it. But how are you treating it? You know, a lot of times, Lee and I, we, we do a lot of marriage counseling. And, and the, the, a spouse will be like, that's my gift. That's my gift from God. But you're treating them like dirt. You see, how are you stewarding the relationship with your spouse? The way you treat the gift reflects on the way you feel about the gift giver. How many people? Thank you, Jesus, you gave me a brand new car. And you see that car three months later, and it's filthy. And the engine light's on. Lord, thank you for giving me that job. I've been praying for that opportunity. But you're on your second tardy. And you met with the HR director four times. How are you stewarding? Because the way you steward the gifts reflects on the way that you feel about the gift giver. I want you to, I want you to receive the blessing and understanding that God trusts you with his stuff. Parents, we're all parents. I mean, how much do you trust your kids with all your stuff? Now, as they grow and they mature, we trust them with more stuff. This is the same principle. It's the same process. Matter of fact, in trust, the slide, it means to put into the protection and care of another. This is what God's doing with us. It's all His, but He's putting it. He's entrusting us to care for it and to protect it. Our children, they're God's kids, but He trusts us to raise and steward those rascals, to care for them, to trust them. And to raise them up. So I really do. I'm just, I keep saying I want to challenge you. It's the first night of a new series. It's always a, trying to set the standard, set the tone. But I really want to, I just do. I want to challenge you to, to start thinking big picture. Only you know your life. You know those areas where, be it relationships or the talents that God's given you or the abilities that he's trusted you with. Are you stewarding them well? Are you being generous with those gifts? You see, it's so powerful to understand that you are the steward and that God is the owner. Like if that doesn't take pressure off of you, I don't know it will. So I really do. I just, I ask, you know, when you think about when people trust you, when they lend you their tools or their vehicle, or whatever it is. I would guarantee that most of us do, that we take better care of it 
then we do our own stuff. I want you to adopt and accept that reality from, the, from our kids to our jobs. Everything God trusts to us to steward. And you know, people, sometimes a harsh reality and people are like, well, well, you know, I don't have nothing. Like, where's all this blessing? Where's all, this, all these flowing waters of rivers of abundance? And listen, the truth is, is that God can only give to you once he can trust to give through you. You're looking, not you, people are always looking for this anointing, this gifting. They want to do miraculous things. But when God gives them a gift, when God gives them an opportunity to share that gift, to steward it well, and they choose not to. See, God doesn't bank up a bunch of credit in an account that's never, that's never spent. God will give to you when he can trust to give through you. Because you cannot outgive God. You start giving your time and your treasure and your talent, you will see that abundant flow of God's provisions come in your life. There's only t- people, oh, there's only 24 hours in a day. Well, how do they get so much more done than I do? Because they're good stewards of their time. They're not worried about capturing a secondhand clock that never stops ticking. So this is the truth. When we ask ourselves, well, why didn't God give me more to manage? He's not going to overburden you. He's going to protect you. Uh, one, of the, one of the parables that, that really opened my eyes is Matthew 25, 21. It's the parable of the talents. And if we're familiar with that, and I'll just read a snippet from it. And it says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. If you remember, there was three servants. The master gave uh, five talents, two talents, and one talent. And then he went away. And when he came back, the guy with the five, I say the guy, the person with the five, had multiplied it. And the guy with the two had doubled it. But the one with the one hid it, buried it in the ground. And God told the one with the five and the one with the two, the ones that multiplied, that stewarded well, that cared for, good and faithful servant. And the one with the one said, well, I was afraid. So I hid it. I hid my talent. And the master called him, you wicked servant. See, God expects multiplication. God expects multiplication. If you minister a little bit, minister. And God will multiply your opportunities to minister. If it's financial and you're a good steward, God will multiply that. But if we're taking that one talent and we're burying it in the dirt because we're scared that we might lose it or I'm not really sure what to do with it, then God cannot give you more than you're capable of managing. Not just from the financial sense, but in the ministry sense, in the relationship sense. Like, I see people on social media, they're like, I just moved to the DFW area. I go to a church, but I can't find no friends. Are you a good friend to have? Are you managing your friendships well? Are you stewarding the people in your life well? Are you a consumer of those people? Or are you ministering and pouring out to those people? God's going to protect those people from you if you're not a good steward of friendship and relationship. So when I say that God owns it all and he trusts you with everything, he trusts you with everything. See, God wants you to be faithful. He wants you to be successful. Deuteronomy 8.18 tells us, and, I shall re- and, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as is this day. You see, people look for when they're talking about provision. God's not an ATM machine. They're like, when's it going to start raining money? It's not going to rain money. God's not going to write you a check. God will give you wisdom and power. He will give you wisdom and power. And part of that wisdom and power is understanding how to steward well. But God wants you to be successful to maintain and establish the covenant that he made with you. God owns the cattle on a thousand hill. So people look and say, well, why don't I have at least one? Well, are you a good steward? Are you a good manager of those talents? Because when you are, then God will increase what he can trust you with. 
You know, I'll tell you, John 21, 11. As Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. This is what I want to share. People are always asking, when's the breakthrough coming? When's the breakthrough coming? I've been working hard. I've been looking for that promotion. I've been saving, I've been saving money and, and I've been, I've been, you know, I've been doing better. God's waiting for you to, to get your nets ready. God's waiting for you to fix the holes in your net. Maybe you're waiting for a financial breakthrough. But there's, but there's a couple of debt that hadn't been paid. You know, people always say, well, well, I believe the Lord's going to give me a million dollars. Do you believe that? I do believe that. Well, have you found yourself a CPA? Hmm. Have you got yourself a, a, a maybe a money market or some kind of plan? No. Then your nets are not ready. We get single people. They're like, well, I believe the Lord's going to bring a, bring a spouse into my, a person that I'll marry. Okay, cool. Good. Um, have, you, have you read any marriage books? No. How about relationship books? No. Have you prayed to the Lord what you want in a spouse? Mm, no. I just figured I'd know what I know. You see, your nets are not ready. You see, well, I've been waiting to, I've been waiting to start a ministry. Okay, well, well, nothing happens. Have you been reading the Word? Have you been spending time in your, in your prayer closet? Have you been learning how to hear from the Holy Spirit? I just figured that would come when they gave me a microphone and turned it on. No, you see, your nets are not ready. I want to challenge you. Start thinking about your life, no matter what it is. And you're waiting for that breakthrough. You're waiting for that provision. And start really self-assessing. Are your nets ready to receive the fullness of those 153 fish? Because it says, large fish, and the net was not broken. The net was not broken. God will give to you when he can trust to give through you and when he knows that you've readied your nets. You're ready for a new season in life? Whatever that new season is, have you prepared your nets to receive the goodness of God's blessings? Have you prepared your nets to receive the goodness of being a good steward? These are some of the, we talk about renewing our minds. And these are some of the challenges that, that we really have got to think about. It's easy to just kind of bumble and stumble through life and let things just kind of work out. But God doesn't want us to bumble and stumble. He wants us to be intentional about our relationships, about our friendships. He wants us to be intentional about our, our clothing, our health, about everything God expects us to be intentional. And as he sees that we're better at it and that our tensile strength is stronger, then he'll give us more. And then he'll give us more. Because we've become good biblical stewards. We've learned what it is to understand healthy stewardship. So that is the end of tonight's lesson. Who's the owner? So if we can stand for, for the prayer. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for entrusting us with everything that you first created. I pray that we, that we focus on stewarding our relationship with you above and beyond all. I pray that we steward our souls well by renewing our mind, transforming our mind, Romans 12, 2, that we do not, that we do not let the trappings of this world control the way that we think and that we react and we respond, that instead that we renew our minds with your word. I pray that, that, we, that we're bold enough to, to hupo tasso, to submit and surrender to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in these areas that he's going to start to show us where you're not being as good of a steward as you could be with your health, with your vehicle, with your finances, with your relationships. And don't take offense to that from the Holy Spirit. He's trying to help you steward 
everything better. So you become better at stewarding everything. So Lord, I thank you for this, for this night. I thank you for allowing us to come back together. I look forward to the, to the fellowship in the small groups. And I do, Lord. I know that there is going to be spiritual fruit that comes from this series because this is the series that you gave us to share. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.